Welcome back to our deep dive into software testing. Today we'll turn the spotlight on behavioral testing and behavior driven development. If you missed either of the two previous episodes, then you should find links on or around this video. Assuming you're all caught up, let's get started. Hi, this is Gary. Welcome to Development That Pays. Back in episode 20, I introduced you to this team and the thing that happened way too often. The API would break and three other teams would down tools and wait and hover. After going through the pain of this half a dozen times, we called enough is enough and asked for a fortnight to put things right. To our astonishment, we were turned down. The end. Oh, you're still watching? Oh, great, because what happened next was rather wonderful. This guy, the lead developer, was determined. Like the rest of us, he was working long days and most weekends. Unlike the rest of us, he was spending his very limited free time putting in place everything necessary to perform behavioral testing. Only when that was done did he share his plan with the team. He dragged us off into a conference room, closed the door, and said in rather hushed tones, we asked to write tests, they said no. But I believe we need those tests, so I'm going to start writing them, in my own time if necessary. Is anyone with me? Of course we were with him. During office hours, we worked on new features as we'd been requested to do, but with one caveat. Every time we wrote a new feature, we also wrote a behavioural test to go with it. Outside working hours, we started adding in the behavioural tests for the existing features. I'll come back to the story in a moment, but I think it's high time we had an example of a real behavioural test. Let's take the example of using a cash machine. One of the tests we could do might go as follows. Given the account balance is £100, and the card is valid, and the machine contains enough money, when the account holder requests £20, then the cash point should dispense £20, and the account balance should be £80, and the card should be returned. A couple of things to notice about this scenario. First of all, it's written in plain English. There are no technical terms here at all. Secondly, there are three sections to this scenario. There's the context, there's the action, and then there are the consequences of the action. Back to the story. After a fortnight of very part-time working, our tests were paying dividends. The system was more solid, and never again did we give the other teams any reason to down tools. Unlike writing unit tests, writing behavioural tests for existing code is not particularly difficult. There's no unscrewing to be done, there's no need for independence. Indeed, the interdependence is the very thing we want to test. As well as being great for existing code bases, behavioural testing is also great for code bases that have yet to be written. And that's what behaviour driven testing, BDD, is all about. The test scenarios are written up front and the developers write their code until the tests pass. Team A was right to call timeout. It would be harsh to say that the product owners were wrong to give their agreement. They could hardly be expected to know that it's really, really difficult to write unit tests for an existing code base. Did the new unit tests deliver benefit? Yes, they did. Was the benefit significant? No, it wasn't. Team B was also right to call timeout, and the business owners were also wrong to say no. The business owners were very lucky that the team wouldn't take no for an answer. The existing code base was challenging, so the decision to write behavioural tests was a very good one. Did the new behavioural tests deliver benefit? Yes, they did. Was the benefit significant? Absolutely. Talk to you next time. Thank you very much for watching. If you've made it this far, the chances are quite good that you're the only one. It's just you. So it's down to you to comment, like, and share. After all, if you don't, who will?